Welcome to episode 24 of the Total Hockey Training Podcast. I'm your host, Sean Scahan. And before I introduce my next guest, I just want to remind everybody, Total Hockey Training is available at trainheroic.com. And we are rolling in the off-season program four days per week. This is a 12-week program. And this is the time when you need to be putting in the work in the weight room and getting better and also total hockey training two is available on my profile there link tree is probably the best way to, to find me and yeah that's available and we're rolling um Skahan strength and conditioning is rolling along we're busy and just trying to get athletes better at what they do so that being said i want to introduce my next guest i have the Outmost privilege and honor to introduce my good friend and one of the best equipment managers in the National Hockey League, Ricky Bromwell. What's up, pal? How are you? What's going on, Sean? How are you today? Doing great. Doing great. I hope you like that introduction. And uh, that intro is the best I've ever heard. Can I <laughs> put that on a T-shirt and sell it at Phillies games? That'd be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be that'd yeah. be fun. Hey, was, so Sean said I'm the best. I'm sorry. I don't know what you guys are talking about. It's up there. Sean says, it's, yeah. That's Garrett. That's got to yeah. carry a lot of weight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah. Hey, I awesome. just want everyone to appreciate this conversation. This guy's the best. And, um, you know, everyone who knows Ricky just loves him. And Ricky has this personality where, like, you just want to be his friend. And I work with Ricky for what, four, four years or so. And, yeah. You know, um, Ricky is someone who I have an utmost respect for and someone who I knew had my back and who I could trust. And, and that was really big for me. So, Ricky, tell, tell us about you, like where you're from and what got you to be the head equipment manager for the Flyers. Like, talk about your path. Yeah, well, it's it's a long one. I, I started off, my dad worked at the building in Kansas. I'm from Kansas City, Missouri. Born in Chicago, moved to KC when I was three and, and grew up in Kansas City. So I consider myself a, a Kansas City person. Obviously, Chiefs Royals go all the time. I love the fact that we're the new Patriots <laughs> and everybody hates us. That's yeah, the best that's thing true. in the world. I know how you felt. It's great. Um, but my dad worked as a food service. He was a concessions manager at the building where the Kansas City Blades played back in the IHL days. This is in 91. So I was just going into high schools, playing football. Uh, my dad got me a job as like a stick boy down there. And I was like, I had no clue what hockey was. So I might had my dad take me to Montgomery wards and buy me EA sports, NHL hockey 91. I think it was the very first game. Cause I had a Genesis and that's how I learned offsides and icing. And that's how I learned the sport was on a damn video game, which is nuts. And I know Jeremy Roenick is still the best player ever on those damn video games. So figure that yeah, he out. Was 93 Sega, right? 93 Sega was, he yeah. was unreal. <laughs> um, but, uh, so I kind of got into it that way and did that all through high school. And then, um, once high school ended, they hired me as the truck guy. Cause our truck driver got a hip replacement. So I, I did that for six years. And then in 01, the league folded and I kind of needed to find a job. And I was, I ended up getting the uh, head equipment manager job in East coast league in Atlantic city, um, which is out 45 minutes an hour from here where I'm at now. And uh, got that job, moved everything out there, uh, did that for a year. And then I ended up getting the Houston Arrows head equipment manager job in the American League. And I went there for five, was there for five years. And then that's when San Jose, their assistant job was open. So packed up everything, moved out to San Jose in 07, I think it was, it was 07. Was the assistant there for three years, made a lateral move to Minnesota where I met you. And I was in Minnesota for 11. And then three years ago, I got the head equipment manager job here in Philadelphia with the Flyers. So it's like I've been, it's kind of crazy. You start off in the center of the country, move out to the Atlantic coast, went down to the Gulf coast, out to Pacific, right back down in the middle. And now here I am back out on the East coast again. So it's my car's driven all over this damn country. We <laughs> figured it. it out. Yeah. I love it. Cause I, you know, did some similar things with moving to Anaheim from Massachusetts well, back in the from day. Mass. Yeah. Yeah. That's a drive. That's let, a haul. Let me ask you this. Like what, what, what about it? What about what you do makes you think back to like, okay, this is why I did it. Like, why do you love what you do? 
to to make those sacrifices at the time. But I get it. Like you probably thought the way I did. Those weren't sacrifices to me. That was me kind of chasing down what I wanted to do. So like talk about that if you could. Oh, uh, absolutely. So the, the thing is like working as a stick boy, I kind of I fell in love with the game. Um but it wasn't really a job description. You know what I mean? Like it was just a game night, 40 games a year type of thing. And then when they hired me, when I got out of high school in 95, they were like, Hey, we need a truck guy. Do you want to get hired? We'll pay 200 bucks a week or whatever it was. And I was like, yes, absolutely. That's where I really fell in love with the job. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'd sit there doing laundry at two in the morning. And, and I'm just like, you know what? I'm gonna teach myself how to sew. So I'd start sewing stuff on a machine or using the big machine to screw around, break some needles and, and I'm like, I really like this. Like, and the big thing is, is I, I get to be myself every day at work. Mm -hmm. Like I go to work and I'm happy. You know what I mean? Like I don't mm -hmm. have to, do we have holidays off? No. Do we have the summers off? Yeah. For the most part nowadays, not so much, but it, it's a thing where you go to work and you become one with that whole team. You know, you feel like you're, you're a part of something. You're part of a family, not, you're not just, you're not just the guy that does the taxes or the guy that I'm not downplaying those people, but you're not just a, a specific set like as an equipment manager too everybody comes to you for everything it's like you're you're worried about a cone you're not worried about a circle of things you're worried about everybody because the strength coaches will come to me because they need something off like they need help fixing a trunk or um i get a player come to me get the batano cover put on his truck because i know how to work on like do little stupid mechanical stuff like that so i'll go out and help him but you know what i mean like everybody comes to you for everything and that's the thing that i love the most about that is that I feel wanted every day I step into that rink. You know what I mean? Like I yeah. step into my office and, and, and people want to do that. And it just keeps me in that good mood. Not to mention, I, I view the equipment staff and this isn't me downplaying anybody else, but usually equipment staffs, the first people the players see in the morning. Mm -hmm. And when they show up and you have that foundation of guys that are, are happy, smiling, good morning, you know what I mean? Like the, as long as we stay that the same as you can build a good team off of them, I'm not saying we're winning because of that, but I say that doesn't hurt. You know what I mean? Like the guys are like, Oh, they see this guy, these guys happy. And, and he's the same every day, like that consistency of it. It makes them happy as well. You know what I mean? So that they're look good, feel good, play good, that type of thing, you know? And, and I just may not be what you're looking for, but I, I just love going to the ring. No, I, that's exactly I, what I'm I, looking for. It's yeah. The, it's the the why of why you do a job, you know? Yeah. It, it's it, the driving factor. Everybody says, Oh, it's to win a Stanley cup. Well, yeah, that would be awesome to win a Stanley cup, but I'll tell you one thing. If I never win a Stanley cup, I'm still going to be thankful for every, I'm, I'm honored. I'm thankful. And I'm very blessed in the fact that I can go to work and enjoy going to work every awesome. day, even when I'm tired, you know, like it doesn't matter. Get in at three in the morning, unpack bags, right back to work at nine 30 done. I'll do it all day long. That's awesome. That's a great answer. And I did see a clip recently. I think you hit 2000 games and Correct. I think d -Lo, was it D-Lo who put, gave you some mask. What, what's up with that? Yeah. Like, it's, well, is that, that, that can out or is that, or is that something that stays in the room? That, I understand that. No, that's fine. No, they, yeah, no, they know it's like the underdog mask. I think the Phillies did it. I think the Eagles might've did it too. Back when they won the Super Bowl that year is that I feel like they're the underdog. Like they picked us. I mean, this is what's crazy about the Philadelphia Flyers right now, and I'm not going to talk hockey so much, but it's – we were picked to pick 34 – supposed to finish 31st out of 32, and and we're, we're fighting for a playoff spot right now, which is like the underdog story of what – like there's no way the Flyers were supposed to be where they're at right now. And that underdog mask kind of – it's like a dog mask. So it's like you're the underdog kind of mm -hmm. thing. Like you put the dirty, nasty chain on, you put the mask on, you bark – like that's kind of what they do after games for the player of the game. And for D'Lo to give that to me was, I kind of knew I was trying to hide actually, because I was in Winnipeg and you know, that bathroom where you wrap around, yeah. I was kind of going away and I had Johnny ran in my assistant and uh, he ran in, grabbed me, goes, no, no, no. Cause he already knew I was getting it if we would have yeah. won. So I walked back in there and it was like, ah, great. You know how we are. Like we don't, you're the same way. Like we don't like the, it's not that we don't, it's not like we hate the attention. We don't strive for that. Like we don't do this job for people to notice me, well, you know, like we're the behind the scenes you, guys. You don't, but I think some of your former coworkers might be guilty of that. <laughs> yeah. We won't <laughs> get into that. <laughs> <laughs>
No, the, oh, so you yeah. didn't trip over the gondola pizzas, right? When you were coming out of that bathroom? No, I was eating them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, I, I do want to awesome. talk hockey for just a second here. Like, yes, I, I, I text you all the time. I watch, I watch the YouTube clips of your coach. I'm like, and I always say to myself, man, I wish I had the opportunity to work for that John Tortorella. Because I remember back in, you know, years ago, you'd always hear like, oh, yeah, you know, Torts loves his trainers. You know, Torts just, you know, he's just a great human being to work with. I'm not saying the coaches that I, that we work with together or I work with before are, are bad people at all. Just don't want to say that. But I've heard, yeah. I've heard just awesome things about Torts. Can you talk about that a little bit? Is he, Absolutely. Is he is what, when we see on these, uh, press clips is that what you what you get on a daily basis that's who he is like i he's black and white right mm -hmm. like he's not i i can't it's so hard to come up with words to describe the guy because i would do can we swear on this yeah yeah, yeah i can fuck i would do fucking anything for that guy like mm -hmm. all you had to do is ask and you're there like he makes you he he believes in you in the way and he makes you accountable and that's what i love about it is that if you're dogging it he will he'll fucking call you out like, mm -hmm. and he won't think twice about it. And I love that. But then he's also one of the sweetest, nicest human beings you'll meet in your life. Like he will sit there and he will have a 40 minute conversation with you on what the hell's going on in your life. If you, if you want to vent to him, you can vent to him. He will sit there and listen. Like as scary as some people have asked me is, is he's as scary as he is on TV? And I'm like, no, he's like, he's family man like i would do anything for him and i know that if the roles were reversed he would do it for me because that's just the kind of person he is he wears it on his sleeve his wife is absolutely fantastic his kids are great like they're just everything about them i i cherish to i'm honored like i get to work i get to be his equipment guy get out of here you know what i mean like yeah. he makes you want to be better like Love he that. drives there's a torts factor there really is with hockey teams, mm -hmm. you know? So do you think, and, um, do you think the players, I mean, obviously not all of them, but do you think a lot of the players have that same thought process? Oh, yes, I, I, I do. And the thing is, is players have changed over time. Like they, when we, when I first started out, like, there was more like with the way things are in the world nowadays with the hazing and colleges and they do all that stuff, like all that's gone, right? We don't do any of that anymore. I've seen, I've seen that transition happen and it's hard for younger, the younger generation to be able to take that criticism mm -hmm. and, and see that that criticism is coming from a place that wants them to get better. They're not telling you that because they want to crush you. They're telling you that so that you know what's wrong so that you can make yourself better. And I think that's the torts factor is that he helps these players understand that and see that and then in turn get better from it. You know, like when you mm -hmm. see him yelling at a guy on the bench, he's yelling at you. Yeah, because he's very emotional, but it's like your dad yelling at you. Like mm -hmm. your dad's like, wake up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, what are you doing? Get out of this funk you're in. Wake up. Let's go do it. And if you go out there and do it, he respects you. And, and everything's good, you know? And then he'll mm -hmm. pull you aside afterwards. Hey, I didn't want to, you know what I mean? He, yeah. he does it the right way right. on what, the way you do it. It's, it's, there's a fine line there you have to do because there's some, sometimes you get yelled at and what do you want to do? You want to stick your head in the hole like an ostrich and just hide. And, and he makes you not do that. I was like, no, I don't want you to dig your whole head in the hole. I want you to get up, get off your ass and do this. And guys do it. And that's that's another huge factor on where we're at in this situation. You know, where we're at as the Flyers. Like, we're going to – we obviously have to win tomorrow, but we need some help. But still, we're in that position. At this time last year, we were eliminated mid-February, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like we're coming down to the last game of the year, and it's going to mean everything to win that hockey game, <laughs> which is so freaking exciting. You don't even know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's the day-to-day yeah. -day grind, and, like, you keep going until – you no matter if it's game 82 or Stanley cup, you keep going until you, yep. you, you, you know, you have a ring, you know, exactly. You know exactly what it is. Yeah. And so every player then because of that black and white transparency, they, every player knows where they stand then. Correct. Is that Absolutely. I, I believe that. I believe that. Yes. 
That's awesome. That's awesome. And hey, whether you like it or not, they know where they stand and they probably know what they need, need to do to get, whether it's more ice time or power play time, whatever that may be, right? Correct. Very correct. Yes. Awesome, man. So, okay, I, I want to talk to you about, I, I don't know how to approach this. Talk to me, where are you in, say, the last five years physically? Um. Well, that I mean, you you saw, <laughs> John, you were a huge part of, well, I'm just going to start off. So 2018 training camp, it's, it's September. Um, a trip, it's Labor Day weekend. Uh, I'm at the rink. I'm sewing nameplates for training camp. And I tripped on a ream of paper box in the storage room. And I tore my Achilles 70%. And I was like, had a dead foot or whatever. So I go to the doctor the next day. And when they checked me in and weighed me, I was 404 pounds. And, and that was kind of the time where I was like, all right, I got to change something like this. Here I am. Like, I'm not getting any younger. I'm 400 pounds. Like I've been 375, 380 my whole life. And it was always never felt like I was 380. I might I look like it and maybe I walked like it, but I never felt like it. Mm -hmm. So uh, it never really hit me until I saw that that four that four on the scale, and um, I remember making a change and I started researching food and nutrition and all that stuff. And that's when I nixed the whole sugar thing and did that for a year. And you were a huge part because you supported me in that whole thing. And, and you and I talked. I talked to you a ton about nutrition and what you put in your body. And I just cut sugar out, period, like fruit. I cut out fruit. I cut out everything. I still eat carbs. I still eat protein. Still, I just drank water and black coffee. They like cut out all the soda, cut out all the sports drinks, cut out all the, any kind of spark or anything like that. And, and lost like 50 pounds that first year. But the biggest thing that changed me was that summer of 19, when you and I did that prolonged fast. Mm -hmm. And you said, hey, do you want to do this with me? And I was like, yeah. So we did that five-day fast. I lost like 18 pounds, um, just eating olives and fucking soup. It was garbage, but still like crackers, 18 pounds, crackers, crack. Oh, I forgot about the crackers. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but that got me into fasting and that's where I was like, you know what? You really don't have to have food. I don't burn enough calories in a day to put in three meals a day. So I nixed a meal. I started eating at 12 and started at 12 and eight. And then I moved that to 12 and five and, since then, now I'm 204 pounds. So I lost another, I've lost 200 pounds in total. So I lost another 150 pounds doing that. And, and as far as workouts go, like. Wait, say that again. How many, how many pounds? 202 or 200 pounds pretty much. I'm 204 now. So I just weighed the other day. I was 203.9. So, so I was 404 at one point. 200 so pounds. 200 pounds. Yeah. I mean, from September of 2018 to today or yesterday. So, and it's, it fluctuates. I've, I've done surgery now. I also had surgery last summer on my skin and my stomach. So I had a okay. big tummy tuck procedure done to get rid of the excess skin. And um, I'll send you a picture. I'll send you a picture of us. We did, we did tarps off at the stadium series game. That's okay. kind of a joke with scarves and stuff. I'll send that to you so you can kind of see it. But like, I got sex lines now. Like, I'm like, get the fuck out of here. I'm sex lines. Like I'm Rick Bronwell. I don't, I'm not supposed to have sex lines, you know? So all your female people that are going to watch, like I'm afraid they're going to be way too turned on when they. Well, it's my mom okay. probably watches this once in a while. So. That's no, I love your mom. We FaceTime all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I guess for me, like, you know, I can't tell you many people it, it, for me. Well, this, first of all, this is about you, but for me, I guess when you're, when you're with you, when I'm with you every day, you don't, I guess you don't really see. Oh, absolutely. This, this transformation yeah, you, taking place. Cause you're, you're always, you're still the same guy. Yeah. You no, know, but the physical appearance, it just kind of like, it got, to, you know, it, it, I guess when you're grinding away day in and day out and for you, it was, you know, making those changes and applying that discipline to your daily life. And then you, do you still have the, the, um, the power, the, 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 the power plate, the, the that's, vibrating that's, board? 
Yeah, that's what I was going to get into there too. Like as far as working out, like I don't, I didn't, I, I got this, it was during COVID and my steps were not. Now I'm pretty active on a daily basis. So yeah. Yeah, as you know, like on a game day, I'll do 20, 25,000 steps, just back and forth bench. You're up on your feet from six in the morning till, you know, 11 o'clock at night when you get home and go to bed. So it, it was, it was easy for that. But then COVID hit and I was like, well, what am I, I'm my calories. Like I'm not, my steps are down. Everything's down. The only way I had to track myself pretty much was steps based on, you know, I wasn't really worried about calories so much as far as steps. And I noticed I was down to like, you know, 4,000 steps a day. And I'm like, all right, we got to do something. So I, I started researching exercise equipment and I found on Amazon a hurdle vibration platform board thing that I bought. It was like 150 bucks. And I act like I'm running on that for 30 to 40 minutes a day. I just use two three pound weights, dumbbells in my hands and hold them as I act like I'm running for 30 minutes. And I've done that every day since. And Still that's kind of... I, I still do it every morning. I get up, get up at 5 a.m. I got on my inversion board and I do my 60 sit-ups on that and just sort of hang and breathe, let my back pop out. I bought a rower. I bought one of those hydro rowers. It's in my apartment right now. And I was doing, I was pretty religious on that, but I didn't really like, I don't know. That's the impact. My knees aren't the best. So I never was a runner. I, in fact, I don't run correctly. Like I'm just not that hype. Like riding a bike, your ass hurts. Like, you know, all that stuff for rolling was actually something I could get on the machine and, and do it and do it for 20 minutes and feel good about it and get the heart rate up. So, cause the board never gets your heart rate up. It, my watch says I'm at 140 and I'm like, there's not a chance in hell I'm at 140 beats a minute. But I think the board has helped me with like core, my core balancing, like the balance points and it's worked because it does, if you're not engaging your core and your legs and stuff, and I sort of get myself at a 45 degree angle on my, on my knees and my thighs. So I engage the thighs, engage the core. If you don't do that on that board, it will kick your ass off that thing. I mean, you've tried them. Yeah. Like you've tried nice ones. You've tried expensive ones too, but, and, and they're, and for 150, 200 bucks on Amazon, I've, I've gone through like seven or eight of them in the time I've been doing it since 2019 or 2020, whenever COVID hit and I take it on the road with me, it's in the practice yeah. Jersey trunk. So I do it on the road and it's just, Something that's part of my routine. Like I do it every morning. But I think you also one, you you had a that Achilles tendon situation and you obviously said enough's enough. Mm -hmm. And but you applied this discipline in your life. Like, you know, think about it. You weren't you're talking about you know, you went through three or four of those boards and bring it on the road. You weren't doing that before when you were 400 yeah. pounds. Like what, I guess, like what changed that discipline? Are you, it just like, are you, do you have it in your head? Like, there's no way I'm going back to that person who I was before. 100%. The main motivation on that was what, NHL team is going to hire a head equipment manager that's 400 pounds was that was my motivation we had it wasn't talks, right yeah oh absolutely we did you and I both did and it was like Tony talked to me about that Mike Aldrich when I was in San Jose talked to me about it back then but when I was when I was 350 360 370 I, I didn't feel 370 mm -hmm. like I thought I was a skinny fat guy Do you know what I mean like there's skinny there's fat skinny guys there's guys that are skinny that operate their life as fat people like that's big people, I guess. I, I don't want to offend anybody here, but I mean, I was a fat guy. I was a big fat lard is what I was. And I didn't feel like I was like, I mm -hmm. felt I've never once I'm 47 now. I don't feel 47. I, and uh, obviously the weight loss has got to have helped that, but I don't feel any different now than I did when I was 200 pounds heavier. I still feel like I'm the same, not person so much, but like the way my joints feel my back. I've always been a relatively healthy person as far mm -hmm. as like, I, I've always gone to the doctor, I get a physical every year and my blood work's always good. My cholesterol is always good. The one thing that's changed immensely from losing this weight is my heart and my EKG. Like I, my normal resting heart rate before was probably 75 to 80. And now I'm at my nighttime heart rate's 42, I think. 
Yeah, well, it's you like were, you were taking medication for blood pressure at, at one point, weren't you? I not for blood pressure. It was for I, I have a anxiety, anxiety disorder that um causes my heart to change from like at rest it was seventy five and it would go to two hundred for no reason. I'd just be standing around and it would just start racing out of control. So I'd figure out how to do a Valsalvo, um, how to reset that heart rate to raise my blood pressure like force like bear down and raise your blood pressure so then it resets your heart rate and i had our doc peterson and many gave me some propranolol which is a beta blocker which they give to and that's obviously helped my heart rate go down too but i've been it's just a 10 milligram dose like normally if you have a heart attack they'll give you a 200 milligram dose of this stuff and he put me on this little tiny pill it's the size of almost a pinhead and I just take two of those a day. I take one in the morning, one at five every day. And I've been doing that since 2017, 2000, yeah, 2017 ish. So, and that's helped with my anxiety massively because it's just brought me down. And it kept, I remember when I first took that, my heart wouldn't get above 95, 100. Like I couldn't, like if I was pushing shit above my head, I couldn't get it. I didn't have the energy or the oxygen to my blood to get to my muscles to push this 40 pound box over my head. So I had to train myself to, to do that. And once I did that, I, I'm good now. And I don't even notice that part of it, but I mean, my heart rate was still 70, 75 at that time. After taking that medicine, it was like, once I lost the weight and I had Peterson do my EKG and he goes, dude, your heart is working like four times less as hard to pump the same amount of blood throughout your body because you lost 200 pounds. And he kind of explained it in a way that the benefits of that are astronomical. Right. And the fact that you wake up and every once in a while I'll get a low heart rate notification on my watch at night. It's like your heart rate's below 35 or whatever. And I'm like, freaking, it's not Bugstad low, but it's low. <laughs> you know? Benino. Yeah. Yeah. Like 30s. Guys are like freaking 27 resting heart rate. Like, get out of here. <laughs> now, let me what? ask you this. Obviously, there's a lot of people, you know, for example, I have people that ask me like how did ricky do it how did ricky do it and a lot of people one they don't have the ability the perseverance the discipline the desire to do what you did i'm just going to say that right now it is what it is mm -hmm. people want the shortcut people want to do it quick what do you say to those people who might that are probably so inspired by you that don't have the balls to say anything to you and ask you like that's you know where everyone's insecure i get that yeah what oh, do you have absolutely. to say to those people who might feel like they they need a, a change in their health their their fitness their body composition like yeah. what can well you say, as someone who's lost 200 damn pounds, what can you say? You're you're an authoritative figure on this. What can you say to those people? The biggest the biggest thing I can I, I can tell them, and I'm just going to go back to the way what was going on in my head. Hold on, sorry, Are you still there? Mm -hmm. So the thing that was in my head when I decided to do this is, I mean, this is 2018, so I'm 40 years old um is that when it was 41 42 whatever it was I, my thing was i go i had 40 years hold on sorry hold on uh i'm gonna send him to voicemail sorry i got a phone call coming in what? so my biggest my biggest thing was is i go i had 40 years of doing whatever the fuck i wanted to do so i had my fun i had my time i had to do this i, I just it's so hard to say because my mind changed. It, it just it just clicked in my head. And when I started doing the research, and I'm I'm kind of a not scientific guy, but I'm a scientific guy. Like yeah. I like it, trials, experiments. I've done the NutriSense glucose monitor for four months so I can figure out what spikes my blood sugar, what doesn't spike my blood sugar. So I stay away the foods from the foods that, that spike my blood sugar. And and um, I'm doing this lumen thing to measure my metabolism right now, just to see when I'm in fat burn or when I'm in carb burn. And that, that's, that, that's all for me to know as far as my head, because I get into the, into that aspect of it. So as far as telling somebody to, uh, of what, what they need to do, 
or how I did it was I just said, I'm done. Like, I, I just can't, it was, I mean, like I said, it's kind of a biased thing. Cause I had, I had the motivation of wanting to get to that next level of being one of 32, like being a head equipment manager in the national hockey league. And that was my main motivation. The bonuses of that is that I'll be around for my kids, hopefully grandchildren. And you know, you know what I mean? Like yeah. that type of thing. It's just, you just have to sit there and say, I'm done. Like I'm done. And if, if you, anybody can find the willpower to do that like if there it's not something that's unattainable it's not something that oh well i i just can't not i got can't stop drinking soda i love soda I'm like yeah you can you absolutely can it's the fact that you're giving in to your own weaknesses and, and the rewarding part of the fact is is that i did that and i have help from you because I, I my education i got from you from other people that are in, in that aspect of life. Right. So if you have the ability to do it, everybody has the ability to do it. It's just a matter of you wanting to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, I wish I had a better answer for that, but because it was, it was a switch. It was, it was literally a switch that clicked in my head when I saw that 400, like when I, and that's when I looked down on that scale and it said 404, I was like, are you kidding me? That was a joke I had in my whole life. Like Thornton in San Jose would always be like, oh man, just get to four bills. Just get to four bills. You're only, you're 365. Just put on another 40 pounds and get there and then knock yourself down. And I'm like, hey, okay, whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. And just seeing that is what, that was a switch that clicked. And, and I think most people need something like that. Like mm -hmm. you need to go into the doctor and the doctor say, dude, you got to really watch what you're doing because your blood pressure is really high and you're going to be dead in four years. Like to kind of black and white it to you. Yeah. You know, you need a tortorella probably. <laughs> if you had a torts there, he could probably help motivate you to do it too. But so, um, yeah, I kind of lost my train of thought there because of the damn phone call that came in. But no, I had okay. a really I just, good answer. But I, I want to say thank you for sharing that. And basically, <laughs> you pretty much crushed your inner bitch voice. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Thank you, inner bitch voice. That's yeah. a perfect description of it. It's the thing like, well, I can't do. I can't get rid of beer. Yeah, you can. Yeah, the human body, the only thing the human body needs to survive, and I am living proof of this is water, right? That's number one, you need water. Mm -hmm. You don't, you don't need beer, you don't need soda, you don't, it's the fucking drinks that kill people. Those freaking like we just switched to body armor, but body armor is sugar. Like it's just sugar is all it is. Mm -hmm. Like and athletes are allowed to drink that. Why? Because they burn 4,000 fucking calories a day. I don't. I never will. I don't work out enough to do that. And so that's where I said, screw it. I'm just going to eat twice a day. I'm just going to drink water and black coffee. And if you want tea, you can have tea. Just don't throw the freaking Splenda in it. You know what I mean? Oh, it's, I'm not putting sugar. I'm doing Splenda. It doesn't matter. Splenda sugar. Like it's just a substitute. Like you can't, like I found out things. And I'm getting into it here, but you know, the whole oh, yeah. Tony got sick and tired of me talking about red sauce on pasta. Like red sauce is good. Why? Because they add sugar to it. That's why right. it's fucking good. Just do the Alfredo. That's yeah. just fucking butter, it's butter and cream. It's great. Right. Your body knows what the fuck that is. Mm -hmm. Do olive oil, salt, pepper, like all the time. Like people, they don't understand that, that the sugar, Splenda, Stevia, um all that stuff oh it's natural it's natural sugar no it doesn't fucking matter i don't give a fuck if it comes from you know an orange or it comes from uh, sugar cane that they refine and process it's still sugar and your body still goes what the fuck is this and it stores it unless you're burning four thousand calories a day right. and then you'll use it right so that's how athletes get away with that that's why you stay away calories from it so that's where yeah 100 percent. so no what I, and I hate that. saying that I'm a nutritionist at all, but I've learned a fucking whack ton on, <laughs> on nutrition. Like I really have just by talking to you and talking to other people and doing the research as far as like, all right, erythritol, allulose, monk fruit sweetener. Yeah, you can have that stuff. Why? Because your body doesn't know what the fuck it is. Mm -hmm. So you just, you just poop it out. You eat it and you poop it out. It doesn't get absorbed. It doesn't go anywhere else. So it's all seven sugar alcohol or whatever they call it like that. But I, I did that stuff. Like there's Nick's ice cream, dude, it's fantastic. Like it's the best ice cream ever, but it's made with erythritol. I'll have ice cream every day. I'm, <laughs> I'm cool with that. Like it's all good. And I don't have to burn calories for it because it's like 90 calories a serving. Well, you deserve so, it, so. It, well, think, but it's the willpower. It's definitely, 
the willpower is what got me to where I was to be able to say, fuck, I'm done. Turn the switch off in your brain and just go. And, uh, and I think the best thing is if anybody wanted help, like freaking post my phone number up there, because if I can help anybody, I would love, love to be able to be an inspiration to somebody at some point that saves them from going through the same shit I did. But I also believe that you have to be at a point in your life that you want to do that too. Like there's, if you think like I can't give up beer, then don't give up beer. But when you're when you're having problems with your back and you're having, you know what I mean, like, yeah. and there's a bunch of issues going on, just know that it's probably partially the beer. You know, yeah. got that out. Drink? Are you drinking water? No, I'm not drinking water. Well, there you go. That's why you're freaking cramping up. You know what I mean? Like it's. I don't yeah. know. I'm sorry. The answer isn't the best. No, it's. I really appreciate that response, and just again, thank you for sharing that. I, I knew you would be you'd be proud to talk about that, so I really appreciate that. Any time, any day, any okay, I got any anywhere. Two, I would two talk more about questions, that. and one of them just I'm going to preface one. One of them is a joke. So first, well, both of them Perfect. are kind of jokes. Um, cool. One, you get Tony. No, no, we're not. No, we're not going to go there. With <laughs> yeah, we're not no, put okay. that on camera. <laughs> hey, talk about your high school football career. I remember you telling me one good story. Uh, your high yeah. school. What, what My position only. did you play? Oh, well, I was a big boy. So played for Lincoln College Preparatory Academy in Kansas City, Missouri. We sucked. We weren't very good. We didn't have a lot of guys on the team. It was a high school that you had to hold like a 2.8 GPA to stay going there. It was it was a good high school. Let's say, let's say that. The football team wasn't very good. But I was going to play for Michigan State. So <laughs> I'm a big guy. Like, fuck, you know, walk in there play offensive line first of all i have to preface that with the fact that they wanted me to be a guard because they wanted me to pull and i can't pull i would trip over myself trying to pull off of the left to go into the right type of thing so they moved me to tackle and um i i, I had a problem blocking let's just say like the quarterback got hit quite a bit in practice and my uh coach got really pissed at me one day and and it sticks with me this I can hear him yelling it. There's like spit coming out of his mouth, but there's a play. You're doing a practice play. Guy beats me clean to the inside, hammers our quarterback, and I just hear the, the coach go, God damn it, Bronwell. Pop, you're on the offensive line. You're not on a goddamn buffet line. Wake the fuck up and get go. You know, and, uh, I, I can see him screaming that at me. You're on the offensive line, not the damn buffet line. Get your fat ass in gear and go. Like, and I was like, I gotta quit. <laughs> I played offense and defense, by the way. Defense was more fun. No tackling. Yeah. They just said, <laughs> Bronwell, don't worry about hit. Just hit the guy with the ball. That's all you have to do. Don't worry about plays, you dumbass. Just hit the guy that has the ball. I'm like, all right, I can do all that. Right. I got one more question again. Thank thank God hockey came calling and said, Hey, do you want to hang jocks? And I'm like, Hell yeah. Just Let's so I, just, I'm gonna say this real quick. This is a joke, everybody. No sensitivity yeah. here. No. But Rick, I have a question for you. Yes. Would you rather A spend the day with your wife or B B B <laughs> B B Yeah, I got it. It's one of my, it's one of the best jokes ever. I think is that a Family Guy? Maybe. Want to a spend the day with your wife or B B B B B B B B. Well, um, yeah, man. Well, that's Ricky. Seriously, this has been phenomenal. It's just great to see you and see you in person and hear your voice. I know you're busy with the Flyers, and I hope you guys win that game tomorrow night. This is gonna go out in June, by the way. Um, okay. But um, this is this is April. And they're going into their last regular season of the of the season, and hopefully they win and get some help, and get mm -hmm. to see some more torts clips during the playoff run. That that's oh, what I'm. To get that's the, what I want you guys to win for. You want the sound clips at the end yes, of the game? Yes, I do. Want. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, those are great. No. He looks at you, goes, "Are you?" And by the way, are you? That's the best one where he was on the guy on the Kevin Hayes thing. Oh, that was the best. That was the best. He owned <laughs> that guy. Like he starts answering him, right? another question, and he goes. And you know what else? And I'm like, that's awesome. I he, love it. Then the guy asked him a question. He's like, I'm not taking your question. Yeah, <laughs> hold on. Like a week later. Hold on. Yeah, I'm not taking your question. <laughs> Are you the guy? I know. I, I, I I know. Are you the, aren't you the guy that asked that? 
which one of you guys did that? Is <laughs> Dan? He's like, you know, another thing. That's awesome. Oh, it's so awesome. Accountability, man. Accountability, Accountability is the thing, bro. For everybody. Yeah. All yeah. right, buddy. Well, I love you, man. And thanks for doing. I right, love you too. And we'll yeah. catch up anytime. Soon. And uh, thanks for coming on. I hope people really enjoy this. And um, yeah, go Flyers, buddy. Go Flyers, baby. All right, man. Let's do it. Thanks for your All time. Right. Love okay. you, bud. Love you, yeah. bud. See ya.